going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am back in this background again. I did use this for my channel update video, but I was thinking I've just been doing movie reviews lately. Now, what is something that every movie channel does that people love? And I was like, well, people really seem to love Blu-ray collection videos. So I decided that I would do a Blu-ray collection video. Now, I don't have like an absurd number. It's not going to be long at all. You see some of these Blu-ray collections that are like three hours long and I'm just like, whoa, not this one because I I didn't start collecting until like two months ago. However, I do have a lot of DVDs, but still not an enormous amount. I'm going to be starting with the DVDs first, and these are not in alphabetical order. First up, we have The Shallows. If you watched my top five favorite shark movies video, you know that I really, really love this movie. And the fact that I own it on DVD is like painful to me. This is a movie that you should at least have the Blu-ray for. One day, if I have a 4K TV, I will definitely buy the 4K Blu-ray. I am going to have to upgrade this to a Blu-ray one day, but yeah, just a, a really beautiful movie, a really thrilling movie, and I really enjoyed it. Next up, we have Spider-Man, the original one from 2002. You know, out of Sam Raimi's original trilogy, I've only seen this one. I really need to watch Spider-Man 2 because people say that that one is the best. I'm not even going to bother with Spider-Man 3 because all I've heard is terrible things. But this original film was great. I love it. Tobey Maguire is just... I, I, I don't know what it is. I just just love that guy. Next up is a must own Batman Begins. Now I actually don't own the Dark Knight trilogy in full. I only own Batman Begins. I know the Dark Knight is like the one to own but I don't own it. However I will buy that Blu-ray set at some point. And not only do I believe that this is the definitive Batman origin story, I also believe it's the definitive way to do an origin story. Like any origin story movie about a superhero should look to Batman Begins. Next up is Godzilla. Again most most of these are DVDs that I need to upgrade to Blu-ray, but I actually really liked this movie. I know a lot of people hated it. They were like, It's not enough Godzilla, you only see him for like 10 minutes. Yeah, you do only see him for 10 minutes, but those 10 minutes that you do see him are some of the most well-made monster movie action that I've ever seen in my life. The reveal at the end, when it pans up from his feet to his head and he just lets out that amazing roar, that just gave me goosebumps. I absolutely loved that moment. And I feel like a thing that gets overlooked about this movie is just the human emotion that's added to it. It is one of my favorite monster movies. Here's a fun one for you, the Lego movie. This movie is just a ton of fun, all right? It's just a good time, but it actually is very well made with the Legos and the animation and some of the stop motion that they used, plus Chris Pratt as Emmett. I mean, he's just hilarious. Chris Pratt is just one of those guys you can't help but love him, and his work in this movie was awesome. Everything is awesome. Everything is okay. Yeah, I'm gonna stop that now. <laughs> All right now these DVDs are actually placed backwards So if I get into a trilogy series the last one in the trilogy is gonna come first Which is why this next one is X-Men Apocalypse. I don't think this is a good movie. Okay. I think it's it's fine It's okay. This is definitely the worst in the trilogy next up We have what is probably the best one in the trilogy the second one X-Men Days of Future Past I don't really need to say much about this movie plus I don't really have time to say much about this movie I can only hold your attention for so long. Performances in this movie were great. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique, that was great work. And Hugh Jackman rocking out Wolverine again. I still haven't seen Logan. I really need to see Logan. Now we have the one that started the entire reboot trilogy, X-Men First Class. This is just an awesome movie. This movie is so much fun. It's a blast from the first frame to the last. Great camera work, great cinematography, and really, really outstanding performances. Now we have Journey to the Center of the Earth, the 2008 one with Brendan Fraser. I like this movie. Forget it. I don't care. I love it. It's a very well-made movie. It's a lot of fun. The performances are hilarious while also being really, really good. It doesn't take itself too seriously in the moments that it's not serious, but there are some serious moments in this movie that do really work. We are still in the DVDs, my friends. Don't worry. I am almost done with the DVDs. The Commuter. I love this movie. This is directed by Jean Collette Serra. He also directed The Shallows, Nonstop, Run All Night. He just directs a lot of really underrated films that are so thrilling and this is no exception. This is once again another tension-filled suspenseful movie that just keeps you laser focused on the screen while it's playing. Next up we have what is probably the most divisive film that I own, Cloverfield. So many people hate this movie, all right, including my parents. My, my family just hates this movie like with a passion. I absolutely love it. 
okay? And I feel like I need to justify why I like this movie. Like, I feel obligated to explain why I like it, but you know what? I'm not going to because I am going to be reviewing the Cloverfield series soon, and you will get my full-fledged opinion on this film, but I thought it was great. All right, now we have the second and the best film in the Cloverfield trilogy, 10 Cloverfield Lane. This movie is one of the most suspenseful films I've ever seen in my life. Mary Elizabeth Winstead's performance in this movie I didn't see Mary Elizabeth Winstead, alright? I completely saw Michelle, and that is just the highest praise you can ever give to an actor. But aside from her, obviously the standout performance in this movie is John Goodman. That guy can embody any character. Like, any role can be written for him. He is an amazing actor. The tension in this movie was just incredible. My palms were sweating the entire time. Alright, I'm gonna start moving a little faster now because I don't want to bore you. I can't tell a story for every single one of these. I will try to sum up my thoughts very quickly. All right, we got Real Steel. Everyone thought that this movie was going to be horrible, but it was actually really good with a really good message. Really good performances from Hugh Jackman. I don't know who played the kid, but he gave a great performance and really good chemistry between the two of them. Plus some amazing robot action sequences. All right, this next one is actually kind of terrible and I actually bought it for my brother a few years ago for Christmas, I believe. Pan. This movie sucks. All right, it's not an abomination, but it is definitely a bad movie. And I understand why my brother never watched it. I remember watching this when I was 10 and I was like, oh, that's actually really good. I watch it now, I'm like, that is some of the worst filmmaking I've seen in the past, like, decade. All right, now we're getting into the fun stuff, my Blu-rays. Like I said, I only started collecting about two months ago, so I really don't have many, but I really just wanted to get this video out to you guys. So without further ado, let's get into them. All right, first up, we have the Alfred Hitchcock Essentials Collection. I love Alfred Hitchcock. He's one of my favorite directors of all time. You got Rear Window, Vertigo, North by Northwest, Psycho, and The Birds, which also just so happened to be my top five favorite Hitchcock films of all time. I can't decide which is my favorite. I'm deciding between North by Northwest and Psycho. Both of those movies, like, th those are definitely my top two, but I can't figure out which one is number one and which one is number two. And I don't think I'm ever going to decide because I just love all of these films so much, especially those two. And I think the most underrated film in this set is actually Vertigo. I thought that that was an amazingly directed movie. Hitchcock did an amazing job and the performances were great. I will have reviews for each individual movie in the set at some point, but as for right now, I gotta move on. Collateral. This is an amazing action thriller while also being a great crime drama. This is my favorite Michael Mann film. I didn't see Tom Cruise. I completely saw his character of Vincent and Jamie Foxx gave an amazing performance. Deepwater Horizon. This is based on a true story. In fact, this actually happened off the coast of Mobile, Alabama. You know, you don't see a lot of movies being made about Alabama. Like, Hardly any. We had Alabama Moon and that was actually really good and really underrated, but other than that, this movie was so brutal so gruesome, so intense, and all the better for it because that's what a true story film should be. I just watched 127 Hours this morning, and I will have a review out on that, but wow, that movie just, I can't even describe what I was feeling. And the same goes for this movie. This is a very well shot, very well directed movie that doesn't resort to enormous CGI effects to really show this disaster. A lot of it is practical. You got Mark Wahlberg knocking it out of the park. Do you remember The Happening? Of course you remember The Happening. That movie was awful. Mark Wahlberg's performance was just hilarious. Come on guys, take an interest in science. Now we're getting into my nerdy side here. We have the complete Harry Potter Blu-ray eight film collection. That was a mouthful. I love all of these movies. I think they're all very well made. The three leads that you follow throughout the entire series, Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and of course Emma Watson, portraying Ron, Harry, and Hermione, they all give amazing performances, and I love every single one of these films. I just love the world of it, you know? The idea of this school of witchcraft and wizardry. Really great stuff. Now we got a must own, Jaws. All right, if you're a film fan, if you're a fan of movies, or if you just like movies, you need to own this movie. If you don't own this movie and you like movies, what are you doing? You have to own Jaws, okay? It is required. You must own this masterpiece of a film. It is definitely in my top three of Spielberg's best, if not the best. The tension in this film is masterful. The comedy is masterful. The action is masterful. Hey, Caleb, can you quiet down a little bit? Caleb, I'm filming. Caleb, I'm, I'm, I'm literally filming right now. 
Just an amazing film, and if you want to see my full-fledged thoughts, click on the tag right up there to see my top five favorite shark movies, and you will get a much deeper review. Jeepers Creepers. I like this movie. I really do. I know the director committed some horrible crimes, but this movie was great. It's just so much fun. It builds great tension, really suspenseful. Plus, the Creeper is one of the creepiest horror movie monsters I've ever seen. Very underrated horror film with two really great lead performances. Don't touch this guy's pets. John Wick. I love John Wick. Keanu Reeves knocking it out of the park. Funny story, I've been looking for this Blu-ray for like a year. All right, for like a year, I've been just hunting for this Blu-ray, trying to sniff it out, and I could never find it. But then John Wick 3 was released this year, so I was like, great, I can go to Walmart when they release the third film in a trilogy. They normally have the previous two up there on the shelves at Walmart. So I went to Walmart, and they had like dozens of copies of the 4K of John Wick 3 but they didn't have this. I went up to the counter and I was like, hey, I'm trying to find a movie. Could you help me? The guy's like, yeah, sure. What is it? I was like, it's John Wick. And he was like, oh yeah, sure. He walks me over to the copies of John Wick 3 and I was like, I'm actually talking about the first one from 2014. And he was just like, huh, sorry, can't help you. And he walked away. I'm just like, Thanks, man. But I actually went to Walmart two days ago and I actually found this and I picked it up and I was like, what's that? It's John Wick. So then I bought it for 10 bucks and this is just an amazing movie. Now I'm actually gonna move through these pretty fast because I do have quite a few left and I can't tell a story for all of these. The Jurassic Park Ultimate Trilogy. The first two are great, the third one is eh. Jurassic World, far better than Jurassic Park 3. However, I do feel Colin Trevorrow kind of ruined this universe with the futuristic technology that the park has that doesn't even exist today. Kind of took me out, but still this is a very entertaining reboot. La La Land, this is my favorite musical of all time great performances from Gosling and Stone and amazing music. Also the ending of La La Land. Oh man, that is a tearjerker. Mission Impossible 5 movie collection. I love all the Mission Impossible movies except for two. Oh, Mission Impossible 2. But all the rest of them have great action, great performances from Tom Cruise, Jeremy Renner, Simon Pegg. I mean, that guy's just hilarious. A really great series of movies. Now I know when some of you saw that five movie collection, you're like, you don't own Fallout? You don't own Fallout? I actually do own Fallout right here on its individual Blu-ray with an amazing slipcover. If you haven't figured it out, I love slipcovers. I haven't even taken off the sticker of this. I still have all the papers that come in the actual case just because this needs to remain sleek and fresh. Honestly, this movie just needs that. Amazing action, my favorite Mission Impossible movie. Murder on the Orient Express. I actually bought this for my dad for Christmas a couple years back. He never watched it, so then I was like, you know what, I wanna check this out. I haven't seen the original one from the 70s. I've heard that it's supposed to be amazing, but I heard that this one actually wasn't that good. I watched it. I actually liked it. I know that that's kind of a controversial opinion, but I, I really liked this movie. I thought it was well shot, well made, and I thought the performances were amazing. Nightcrawler. This was the movie that got my channel going, you know? This was the first video I ever posted, my first movie review ever on this channel. And there's not really much I need to say about it. Just go to my uploads, hit sort by oldest first, click on this review, and you will see my full thoughts. Rio, this is a gorgeous animation. I, I really love this movie. It's just so much fun. A great family-friendly adventure that actually has a really good message at its core. Getting into the non-fiction a little bit, we have the 25th anniversary Shark Week collection. I love sharks. If you haven't figured that out, I, I just adore sharks. I think they're amazing creatures. And I love Shark Week. I've been watching Shark Week for as long as I can remember. Every year, I always make sure to reserve that week for Shark Week. This anniversary edition brings back the best shark weeks that we've ever had and I just love this show. To Kill a Mockingbird. This movie is incredible. This movie is just amazing. It was really ahead of its time. It came out in 1962 before integration was a thing and it dealt with things about racial violence and racial discrimination that was really ahead of the time. All right, home stretch. We only have three left. Tomb Raider 2018. Tomb Raider with Alicia Vikander. Not the early 2000s Tomb Raider with Angelina Jolie. I do not own those movies. Part of me does not want to own them just because of how bad they are, but however, part of me does want to own them simply because... 
You know, moving on. This movie was just so much fun. Alicia Vikander owned this role. She is the definitive live action Laura Croft, in my opinion. And I love playing the Tomb Raider video games. I actually am kind of a gamer. I do like playing certain video games. In fact, I have the entire Tomb Raider reboot trilogy of games right there in that cubby. Amazing games, but that's for another video. This movie was just so well made. It was directed by a Norwegian film director by the name of Roar Uthog. And he did an amazing job with these action sequences. World World War Z. Now, I did just review Ad Astra, which also had Brad Pitt, and I've mentioned that I've loved a lot of his work before Ad Astra. And this is one of his performances that I love because he doesn't need to be overly serious. This is just a fun movie that really does kind of poke fun at the zombie apocalypse genre, while also having some legitimate scenes of scares and suspense. If you haven't figured it out, these Blu-rays are in alphabetical order, which means this last film does begin with a Z. Zootopia. Go ahead, laugh. You done? All right, I love this movie, all right? You can make fun of me all you want, but this is a gorgeous animation with great chemistry between our two leads and a really good message at the core. I mean, this movie explores themes about racism, drugs, stereotypes of racism and gender. Like it just, it explores all of these things so deeply and it just really, really hits hard in the end. And that's just something you don't get from a lot of animated movies nowadays, but this movie really, really delivered. Plus it has the slip cover. I love my slip covers, I, I really do. Pretty much everyone loves this movie, but I feel like I have to justify why I love it so much just because I'm not like a little kid and I'm raving about this animated Disney movie. Woo! Ugh, we made it, my friends. That is all of my DVDs and Blu-rays. I know it really isn't many, but I'm still collecting, and I do need to upgrade some of those DVDs to a Blu-ray copy. In about a year or two, maybe even a few months, I will have another Blu-ray collection video for you guys. I really don't know why people like these videos. It's really just someone sitting there holding up DVDs and Blu-rays just saying, I have this movie. I like this movie setting it down. But people like it, and you know what? I like watching them. I've sat through Chris Stuckman's Blu-ray collection videos all the way through, the Flick Picks Blu-ray collection videos, which he recently posted one that was like feature length. It was a feature length video. And I sat through the whole thing, but that guy just also has this presence about him that's just amazing. So I've never really been able to pinpoint why I like these types of videos, but I just do. I like seeing what movies people have, what movies some of my favorite YouTubers have. Anything with talking about movies, Movies, especially a large quantity of movies is just really entertaining. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video and until then keep writing, keep shooting, and keep editing.